start with a prayer and uh, get right into uh, praise and worship, then get into the word. Well, yeah, we just thank you right now for this day that you have made. For we should continue to rejoice in it. But yeah, we just thank you right now. We should be glad in this day for you that you have made for you. We thank you right now for you that we repent of every sin for you. Come to you right now with a repentant heart for you. We repent of every sin that we know of and that we know not of for you. But yeah, we just thank you right now. We come, we come against the powers for the out of darkness for you. We come against all rurock for you out of sickness for you all rurock yes, of evilness for you and disease. But yeah, we just thank you right now. We begin to draw now to you even the more for you. For yeah, we think that our hearts for you and our minds are set towards the things of you for you. For yeah, we thank you that we walk in a rural high condition for you. Where we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh for you. And for yeah, we just magnify your name for this day that we have set aside to just give honor unto you for you. In the name of Son, Yahushua Mashiach, we pray. So be it. We're going to be talking about drawing now into Yah today. We're going to start off in uh, James chapter 4. Uh, we're going to be starting at the, at the uh, sixth verse. Uh, we're going to read verse 6 through 8. James 4, cha James chapter 4, verse 6 reads. But Yah gives more grace. Wherefore he says, Yahuwah resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to Yahuwah. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Let's pause for a minute. But it's the thing. First, you got to be humble. And a lot of people are trying to draw down to Yah without resisting the enemy. They're trying to draw down to Yah with the enemy. And you can't draw down to Yah with issues and with things that needs to be humble in your life, things that you need to lay down at the altar of Yah, you know what I'm saying, that at the spiritual altar of Yah. Like we have a lot of people trying to come to Yah with the problems attached to them with the idea of keeping them and not, you know, letting stuff go and still wanting Yah to help them. That's the thing, to get help from Yah, to draw, you can draw down to Yah, but to get the response you need and to draw down to Yah where it's going to be effective, uh, where it's going to work, you're going to need to, uh, you know, resist the devil. Meaning that when temptation comes, you got to resist the temptation. Anything that's fighting against you, that's that's trying to keep you bound in the flesh, any secret sins, anything, you got to resist it. If you're not resisting and you still call yourself drawing down to Yah, then the enemy is not going to flee. It said resist it that when he will flee from you. And so the more that you resist, the more that, you know, yeah, he'll leave. And the, the more chance you got of him leaving, basically. So you don't have to, uh, you know, have all this heaviness on you trying to come to Yah with the idea of thinking that he's going to help. And you're going to get your problem fixed without you sacrificing something. The thing is, you have to be willing to sacrifice. You have to be willing to lay down your ways, your, your, your lifestyle that you thought you had. You got to be willing to lay it to the side and see what y'all wants to do to uh, reconstruct it where you can actually get help from. Go ahead. All right, eight. Draw yeah. nigh to Yahuwah, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. And so then you draw down to you and he would draw down to you. So even if this is all happening at the same time, you have to have in your mind that you're resisting the enemy with the, with the idea that you're not going to be wrestling or, or dealing with the stuff that's got you bound, anything that's trying to attach itself to you that's stopping you. See, sin is what separates us from Yah. And anything that's got us bound, any that's why I say lay aside every, every heavy weight and sin that does so he's beset us. So we're trying to keep the weights thinking, hey, this isn't a sin, but it's a heaviness. It's like, and it's actually causing you to be separated from Yah because you're thinking that since I'm not doing something that the Bible says wrong, that's not a sin, that I'm okay. A lot of times we can be out of the will of Yah and just because we don't see it in the Bible or see an actual biblical reference to it, we'll try to keep it. But that's that's like the opposite. You know what I'm saying? He wants us to be led by the Ruach HaKadosh. That's why I say those that are led by the Ruach HaKadosh are the sons of him. And so if you're not led by the Ruach and you're trying to hold to things that you know you don't need to be doing just because you don't see it being wrong in the Bible, then you're not trying to operate in the Ruach. You're trying to operate on the kindergarten level. And so you have to let these things go in order to move forward. And if you don't, they're not going to you know, do nothing but hinder you. It's going to actually cause you to be at a standstill, cause you to be plateaued when you can be going higher. And so we're dealing with drawing down to Yah. So we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 55 and we're going to look at verse 6. And after that, we'll move forward. So Isaiah 55, verse 6. Let's say it was seven to 
Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6 reads, Seek ye Yahuwah while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Okay, so basically saying, seek Yahuwah while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. There's going to be a time when he's not going to be able to be found and not be near. And what's going to cause that is the idea that you have, uh, I would say, uh, lag behind. You know, it's like you have uh, procrastinated so long to the point where now, now it seems like it's not even a chance no more. Now, that's always a chance. Don't get me wrong. But this here is making it plain. Seeking the way it may be found, what it means is sometimes your tribulation will last a little longer. It's like just because you know, when he was calling you at one point, <clears throat> you weren't coming in, you weren't feeling the tug or whatever it is, the warning that he was giving you to stop doing something or to start doing something or to start drawing out to him. You didn't do that. So at that time, now the grace isn't there right now. So now you got to go through something in order to get him. You got to go through something a little longer. Say, seek your hood while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. So there's a point in time where the atmosphere is just right for you to come into your life and for you to let go of certain things that you've been holding on to, but you decide to hold on to them. And since you're holding on to them, now he's not near and he's not able to be found. And like, and I understand this, but it's the sin that separates us from Yah. So we can't look at this and, and, and try to look at other scriptures and say, okay, he's always there. He's always available. He's omnipresent, but he's not always there for the mess that you're in. When you decide to do things that are wrong, sometimes he chastises you. Sometimes he begins to what we call get a whooping. He calls you to go through things that you could have avoided going through if you would have came when he was calling you. But now that you know, now that you everything that got real rough, you're trying to come in now, but it's, it's, it's not too late, but it's gonna take more. You're gonna have to force, you're gonna have to force yourself through the wall, through this brick wall that you put up between you and him. You're gonna have to tie down this wall now to get to him because you let this sin build up to the point where it's beginning to hinder you and begin to choke the life out of you. So you just have to make sure that. When you're seeking Yah, there's a time when everything is just right, when he's calling you, when you start getting these warnings, when you start getting people coming, you telling you things, people may witness to you. It can be anything. He can be telling on your heart to do something. You don't do it then, and it's like it was time. But, okay, now it's not time no more. At that time, it's changed, so now it's going to be harder to do it, basically. He may have a system set up just right for you to enter into a scenario that you're trying to enter into, whatever way you want to slice it up, and you don't do it right then. And he's telling you, okay, this is the time. The ground is fertile. It's right for you to do this right now. You say, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to put it off. And that right. time passes by. It can still happen, but it's going to be harder. And you're going to have to really show them now that you're ready because you say, when I was calling you to do this, you didn't do it. Now you're going to have to do it the hard way. And it'll actually eventually get easier, but it's not that time. Moments pass. Seasons pass. Right. Times change. It's not always the same time. It's like, you know, you have to make it there before it's over. If you try to make it to the store and it closed at 10 o'clock to get something that's very important, and you come at 11, well, you got to wait till it opens up that morning. It's just, it's, it's basic mathematics. You can't get it no more. The store is closed, but it will open back up. And that door open back up too. The door that was open for you to enter into whatever it is the most high wants you to enter into or to stop doing what he wants you to stop doing. Whatever it may be, you can use it both ways. And now the thing that you begin to, you know, do is say that this sin begin to be, the demons begin to be seven times strong. Like that. So you begin to have to deal with this thing on a level that wasn't on the level that you could have dealt with it in the beginning. But you decided, no, I don't want to do it now. It's yeah. all about being obedient. So since you say, okay, look, I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't have to worry about it. I'll do it later. Now you got to deal with it. It's a struggle. It's like it's harder for you to do it now. And so uh, we're going to look at... Uh, oh, I want that. It reminds me of the ahead. scripture. He says, the day you hear my voice, harder not your heart. You know. That's right. That's right. The day you hear my voice, harder not your heart. That's right. So you have to do it right then. That's the that's 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 a perfect example because the day. That's why it says seeking why it may be found, calling why he is near. So if you hear me now, this is when you need to do it. But if you don't do it that day, then the next time you know you're not hearing, you're trying to come on your own, and I'm not there right there for you at the moment. I'm, I want to see how bad you want it. Now I'm gonna see if, if you really willing to get this thing. And so it's gonna take a greater sacrifice if you didn't do it like you say the day that you hear my voice. If you didn't do it that day then now the next day may not be that easy. It's going to be harder that next day because you decide to do what you want to do rather than do what he wants you to do. Uh, we in Acts. We're going to be in Acts chapter 10 uh, dealing with uh, Cornelius. Uh, yeah, we're going to start reading at the uh, first verse. First verse. 
I guess that really is. Let's see. Let's see. There was a certain man in Cecilia called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared Yah with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to Yah always. Okay, now pay attention. So Cornelius actually was uh was over the soldiers. So he was a centurion, which was uh responsible for putting the backbone of the soldiers together that did the majority of the damage. And when it came time to fight, uh he was a leader. And so basically he said he was devout and he feared Yah, him and his whole household. Now we got to look at Cornelius at this time as a Gentile. Cornelius is actually doing what he see is right to do. He's copying what he see Yahshua doing. He said, look, I'm going to do what they're doing. I, want, I know that this has to be right. This has to be the way, because I'm sure Cornelius has heard of the miracles. He's heard of everything. You know, it wasn't a secret. I mean, when, 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 uh, when we begin to come through certain cities and come through certain nations, they heard of the thing that Yahuwah had done for us, how he fought on our behalf. So at this, at this particular point in time, we're dealing with Cornelius. We know that when they come back after the exile, when they come back, we have a system set up, the centurion government set up. You have uh, you have seizure, you have all this different stuff, pilot, everybody set up. And this is set up in a way that's different. This is set up here now. What's supposed to be going on is the Great Commission at this point in time. Yusha Mashir, you know, it's, it's all, he's already passed. So he told them, go you this way. I want you to go preach the gospel unto all nations. And this was supposed to be happening. They, they, he's, he's actually trying to latch hold to what he knows is supposed to be happening. He's saying, look, I know I'm not, you know, of the fold. He said, but at the same time, I believe that the Most High will hear me if I pray because he's praying by faith. And what he's doing is he's doing everything he's supposed to do by faith at this point in time. Because at this point, he don't have the real Hakadesh. He hasn't been baptized or nothing. He's just doing what he knows to do that's right. This is why when we, I think we had a side discussion one time about uh, certain people. They didn't do it whatever way the most I say do it in the Bible where they be saved or go to heaven or hell. It was just a side conversation we were having one time. And this shows you that the most high is not going to leave you behind. Cornelius is not even, he's not even in it yet. He's just doing what he knows he's supposed to do that's right at this point in time. And so since he's doing what he knows to do that's right at this time, the most high, we'll see what's going to happen, how the most high is going to answer him before he even gets the Ruach. This is before he even gets the Ruach, before he's baptized or anything. This is what happens. Uh, go ahead to verse three. He saw in a vision evidently about the night hour of the day an angel of Yahuwah coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. Okay, I know that's, that's part of right It's okay. So he saw in a vision. Remember the prophet Joel in the last day. Old men would dream dreams. Young men will see vision. He said he saw in the vision. The Bible is locking everything in. There's nothing left out. He's locking it in. This is the vision. So the vision he's seeing in his vision, the angel. See, the thing is, religion has spooked us so much too. We have to receive uh, and understand that the Most High's message didn't disappear just because you know we have the new and renewed covenant. Everything still stands. Angels still exist. Visions are still real. Dreams still happen. Everything still happens to be led where well, you can be led by the real Hakadesh. So if you're doing everything you know to do that's right. And you don't have everything you need in the written word. You don't know much about the most high. If you know just a little bit to get your heart right, he will line it up where he'll run you into the right individual. He'll send you where you need to go or let you run into you need to run into so that you can get the truth. He won't allow you to go and be uh, destroyed into the lake of fire and brimstone because of your lack of knowledge. It's going to be about your heart's desire to line up. And the more you line up with things, the more the most high begin to bring things your way. Four. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Adonai? And he said unto him, your prayers and your alms are come up from a memorial before Yahuwah. Okay, so he hasn't been praying righteous prayers. They say your prayers and your alms have come up as a memorial before Yahuwah. And so this is showing that he says his prayers and his alms, everything that he's been doing, the money he's been given, the sister he's been uh, giving, you know, anything he's been doing concerning Yahuwah, all, all of it has come up as a memorial. Both of them, you know what I'm saying? So he's been doing what's righteous. His, his heart has to be set right at this point in time. This is when we look at when it talks about how Yahuwah, how he searched the reins of the heart and the mind. And so he's searching the hearts and minds of individuals. So at this particular point in time, he's already checked off that 
Cornelius is righteous in his, in, his, in his ways, the way that he's trying to go about. He's seeking a righteous way. He hasn't got to a point yet where he's actually been bought into that way. He's actually latched on to us yet. But at this time, he's seeking the righteous path. And this is what he's doing. So what he's doing now reminds me of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, when it talks about in verse 33, seek ye first the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. So he sought out the righteousness of Yah by doing these things without even yet being a part. He was not yet even converted yet. You know what I'm saying? He was still a Gentile at this particular point in time. And here it is, Yah is answering his prayer. This is the answer for anyone that may say, okay, well, what happens if? That's no what if. If your heart and mind is right, the most high is going to lead you in the right way. This is without the Ruach. He's going to lead you in the right way. That's it. Because he still has the Ruach. You see, he can see this thing is It talks about then he was going to pour his Ruach upon all flesh. You know what I'm saying? That's upon all flesh. But see, at the same time, you have to get the Ruach high condition inside of you, too. And so therefore, you have ones that are out there that the most high may use, you know what I'm saying, and, and the Ruach may be upon them. So it's like, it don't mean that you know what I'm saying? You have to yet been baptized and converted yet to be led by the most high. He can still lead you, but there's another step. See, there are steps that you have to take to get to the end. Because there are encounters I had with the most high before I even never knew much about the Bible. So it's like, so it's like it doesn't mean that you're getting into the kingdom that way, but it means that there's a way that can lead you into the fact where you can, to the point where you can make it into the kingdom. If your heart and mind is right, the most high is not going to deny you. You know what I'm saying the word talks about that in the scripture. I think it's Psalm 51, where it says a broken ruach and a contrite heart, he will not deny. That's the thing. It didn't say who they was, it said a broken ruach and a contrite heart. You know I'm saying, you know, it may go the other way, but however it is, if you're broken and your heart is right, the most high is not going to just, you know, he's not trying to stop you from coming in. He wants you to come in. We have this mindset that for some reason, religion has taught people that the most high is trying to stop folks from, from getting into the kingdom. He, or he's against you. The most high is not against you. He's against sin. So if your heart is right, he wants you to come in. His hand is stretched out. He told Israel all day long, if I stretch out my hand for the stiff-necked nation. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've, been, I've been wanting you to come in the whole while, but yet you're not right. But the more you have your heart and your, your mind right, the most high is going to run you into the right people, and there won't be no excuses. This shows right here, if it was, then Cornelius would have not got a visitation because he was not yet converted, you know what I'm saying, at this point in time. You go ahead. And now send, and now send men to Jaffa or Jaffa, and call for one Simon whose surname is Kepha or Peter. Okay, so now dealing with this Jaffa here, uh, this is the same place where Jonah fled to, if I'm not mistaken. It's it's actually on the coast, base. It's right outside, about I think it's it talks about it when you study about 30, 30 or 40 miles, I think northwest you know, of the coast of uh, Jerusalem, basically. So this is where they were fishing at. So he's going to go get, think about this, Jonah, it lines up what happened with him in that scenario, and then you see Peter. Well, we know Peter was by trade a fisherman. And so this is the reason why he's sending him there, because this is where he's hanging out at. This is his craft. This is the, this is what he was doing around the time of Yahushua Mashiach. This is when he met him. You know? So this he's still holding on to what he does. So Peter is doing his profession. He's where he hang out at. He said he lodges that. So this is what Peter does. So he said, look, I need you to go to him. And so at this particular point in time, we have to look at this right here. We know that we are supposed to be the light and the salt of the earth. We are supposed to be the ones that's leading in the vision. So this Gentile here is going to go to a representative, which is supposed to be us, which now in this particular point is Peter. And so us, Yasharal, we're supposed to represent the most high. So when those Gentiles want to come in, we have to be in position to show them the way. They're not supposed to be showing us the way. Now, understand that some of us may have a lack of understanding. You may run to somebody that know more about you that's not of a nationality. But, you know, I'm talking in general, we're supposed to be the leader. We're supposed to be the one that's spearheading everything. And that's, and that's what's supposed to happen. They're supposed to latch hold to the truth. We're the natural branches, and they're supposed to be grafted in. But we got to be in position to receive them. We can't be set up where everything, I'll say at this particular point in time, all they were doing was preaching to each other. One another, you know what I'm saying? We had Yashua just ministering back and forth to each other. And it's the same thing we see going on now. We have to understand that even though we minister to one another, we have to minister to those that are out there, that are lost, that don't understand the truth. We can't fold and go along with any form of religion and be, I would say, uh, ashamed or scared to tell that who we are, because that's what they got to latch hold to. That's what got to convict them. That's what it is. We ain't trying to be both of When they don't receive that, they don't receive the truth. We're not trying to approach this from the mindset of what we learn in religion. We don't hide the truth. We are the people. 
But at the same time, we understand that since we are the people, we'll be having people come to us that's not the people, along with those that are the people. It's like it said, go ye and preach to all the nations. That was said in, in Matthew 28. And so therefore, if we go preach to all the nations, those nations will understand that this is the truth. This is what must happen. But we can't deny who we are just to get along with them. You know what I'm saying? We just tell them that, but that's not, that's not a boastful thing. It's just the truth. He sent them to Peter like that. So when he sent him to Peter at that time, Peter had to be set up mentally to understand that, look, this isn't Yashra. This is another soul that's coming forth that wanted the truth that actually, that I heard their prayer. So I'm sending to you so they can be converted. So they can understand that this is what has to happen. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. He lodges with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell you what you ought to do. Now you see that? He said he should tell you what you ought to do. So he got the information. Peter got the instruction. He said, go to him. Go to my representative, Peter. And as we represent for the most high, he said, the, the scripture said we were ambassadors for Yahushua Mashiach. And so as we represent for the most high, then we understand that we need to have the information to tell them what they ought to do. We have to be able to let them know this is what's supposed to happen. And, and, and to do that, we have to receive them. We have to understand that we can't shut the gate up. We can't shut the door of salvation up from those because all of us won't even, our eyes won't even open until all of them come in according to the scripture. So we have to look at when the most High sends somebody, we can't look at them. We can't worry. All we need to see is a soul. We are already set up as the representative. See, this what the problem is that we're in Babylon. And so we have to rewind and everything. This wouldn't be an issue if we were back at home and never been colonized and none of that stuff. But since we've been colonized and we've been put in Babylon, it's like, you know, Egypt, basically what I want to say, modern day Egypt has got our mind backwards. So since we were one thinking we were the Gentiles, now it's hard for us to move forward and understand that we were never the Gentiles. And when you get that point, you, you go rewind about seven, 800 years and then you realize, okay, look, we don't have to go that far, but just go that far back mentally and realize what was going on then and this wasn't a stroke at that point. You already knew who you are, who you were, you were confident, and you let them know what they need to do to latch hold to. But since we're here, all these different religions, you know, so I hate to even call them out. That's why I just say religion. They've, they've got us so brainwashed to the point where we don't understand that we don't have to, like, we don't need to be trying to figure out who we are. It's evident who we are. Move forward from that and represent and, and understand that those that are coming in are not going to all just be us. It's going to be souls coming in. We've been set up to do a job. He came unto us already in the beginning, but we didn't receive it. So at that point, he began to come to those that wanted to, never casting away us. As Romans say, he didn't cast away his people. He said, Yah forbid. He still got us at the same time, but we still got to know that we have a job to do. It's our job to represent the Most High. He said, he's going to tell you what to do. Peter's going to let this Gentile know what needs to do to get converted. And he's set up as a representative of the Most High. Go ahead. All right, um, seven. Yeah. And when the angel which spoke unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. See that waited on him continually showed that he had a, a, a great responsibility. You know what I'm saying? Showed that what he was, he was the one that was set up to dispatch the army out. This was a powerful man that was seeking the most high, showed humility because he didn't have to, he was big. Like I said, he was big time. And saying that he was the one that set up the actual military and everything. So he wasn't, he didn't have to be worried about, you know, like the centurion that sent to Husham and Shig, he sent his servant. They say, he said, he let him know, let him know, you know, the servant lies home sick. He said, just say it in the word. And so should it be. He said, I'm a man of authority. That's what he said. He said, I tell one to go and he go. I tell one to come and he come. He already, they, he understood order and authority because they are in authority. They're in order. They're, they're actually in charge, basically. So he understood that there was a system that had to take place in order for things to happen. So he was already confident in who he was. And this is the thing we have to realize, once we're confident in who we are, we don't wrestle with Gentile versus Yashar and none of that stuff. We move forward. We know who we are and we know who they are and we move forward and we represent. We represent in a way that we let them know that, hey, look, we are the ones and do you want to be a part of this? We're offering it unto you. That's the thing, because it is ours, even though we don't claim, even though a lot of us has got into this form of this new age, whatever they got going on, that don't change nothing. The most I still know who we are and we're still the representative. It don't matter because a, a, a half of the people may not understand who they are. The ones that do understand, it's laid charge to them to represent and let those know that want to latch hold that you you have to latch hold to us. This is the truth. 
and this is what we have going on, and this is what you're going to be a part of to be converted. Because it's a matter of the heart. Those that want to be racist or whatever got to happen, they they heart won't be right in the eyes of the Most High. He's not receiving into that because that's once again pride. And so, go ahead. Hey, and when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Nah. Mm -hmm. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh to the city, Kepha, Peter, went upon the, the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open up and a vessel, a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at four corners and let down to the earth. Wherein all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, rise, Kepha, Peter, kill and eat. But Kepha said, not so, Adonai, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Oh, Peter so dumb ho, he wrestling with the voice from Shamayim. Like he let them know, look, this is all happening pretty much probably simultaneously with this whole situation. These guys already been sent out by Cornelius. He already sent out his, the people to go find him. He said, go get him, go find him. At this particular point in time, here it is, Peter's wrestling with this. He's wrestling with this whole scenario. It's like, and, and just like we was talking earlier, we was having a side conversation that this has already happened. Peter's already been, you know, pretty much a uh, lightweight with group. By the most high, look, you got to let the door open for some of them. We go fast forward in, into probably about Galatians. Paul had to check him and say, look, when you're the one that I'm going to blame, when these Jews came, when the, when, the, when Yashirah came, you came and got up because you were sitting with the Gentiles at first, and now you want to run off and be shamed like that. So he already had been checked one time, and Peter kept having to get checked for this scenario. He had a big issue accepting those that were not of Yashirah. And so it's like, so in this particular point in time, he's wrestling. And it's like, look, you know, you have a job to do, but yet still you want to hold on to the old ways. Some people just don't like to change. He don't understand that we can no longer just preach one to another. Let's say that's not going to get us anywhere. We have to minister this word to everybody that wants to receive it, but they have to receive the whole thing. That's the problem. We can't just look one at another. Like it's kind of like people never leaving outside of their house and just only talking to those of their family and not getting a chance to get out and tell anybody else about the news. How far is that going to uh, go? It's not going to go real far. So at this particular point in time, Peter is going to have to be checked, you know, to get his mind right so he can understand that you, you're shutting the door of salvation. This is big. You, you, you're calling people to go into eternal damnation by not letting them begin to latch hold to the truth. 15. And the voice spoken to him again the second time, what Yah has cleansed, that call not coming. This was done thrice. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now, while Kepha doubted him in himself with his vision, which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Kepha, Peter, were, were lodged there. See that at the same time they're looking for him. At the same time that Peter is, is doubting everything and everything is going on. The centurion soldiers, men is looking for him. He's saying, he said, look, I need y'all to go find him. But at the same time, Peter is wrestling. He's trying to actually, you know, look at whether or not it's common or unclean rather than look at the fact that now it's been cleansed by the most high and you need to receive. That's the thing. So, and then a lot of people try to use this scripture to eat pork and stuff like that. And it's not talking about that. That's it. It's talking about salvation. It's talking about coming into the truth. That's it. And you can't use this to go and eat something that's common and unclean. This is what people try to use to justify something that's going to cause them to have high blood pressure and stuff of that nature. It's like there's nowhere around. It's like we can twist these scriptures. And, you know, it's like anybody can get this, get the Bible and just take certain scriptures out of context and have you believing in doing anything. And half this stuff that you see in here, when you begin to put it in context, it's not even saying what people think they're saying when they start reading from the middle. Like if people start reading in verse 20, it's 40 verses in there and verse one says something totally different like that. You know, so when you start reading James, the beginning of James comes off and it said, James to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. That's to us, he ain't to, that ain't to no Gentile. So you start looking at that, which that's why when you look at stuff in context, you look, you can, they can actually learn from that, but that's, that, that book was not written to them. So you can't just take stuff out of there and start twisting it. And that's what they're doing, taking stuff out of there and they're twisting. And you got people, 
eating bottom feeds and everything just because they read this verse here. And that verse ain't talking about that. You know what I'm saying it's about the, it's the most high to begin to cleanse those that were not clean because they were not. You know what I'm saying Gentile were not coming in into the fold until the way was made in for them to come in too. That's why when when the when the woman came to Yahushua Mashiach, you know what I'm saying, you know, asking for, you know, for, for the bread, which was the healing of us. Like that, he said, look, you know, it's not coming. I give anything you know, to dogs. It's, the bread is for the children. She said, but the dogs eat the crumb that fall from the table. And she was showing the faith that she had, but he was letting her know you're you an outsider. You're a dog. That's it. And that's what was going on. So now they no longer don't have to be dogs. That's why I look at how they cherish these animals and stuff like that. A lot of these, when you, a dog always represents something that's totally unclean. It doesn't represent anything that's clean by nature, anything that nature represents something that's foul. And so if you look at this right here, it's, it's getting back to the point of saying, okay, look, he's no longer going to be a dog. Anybody else that I send you won't be a dog if you take them through the process so they can be cleansed by me. And this is what has to happen. So you can go a little bit further. Um, what was that? 19, you can start 19. Okay. While Kepha thought on the vision, the Ruach said unto him, Behold, three men seek you. Arise, therefore, and get you down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Oh, so this is why I want to go right there. This scripture goes real far. This, this book goes, this chapter goes far. He said, go therefore, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. That's the thing. So, so therefore, we don't have to worry about, you know, when, when, when the Ruach begins to send someone, you know what I'm saying, they're being sent by him. So at this same time, both scenarios are going. Uh, the process was we have Cornelius that prayed was a devout man. You know, what I'm saying he gave alms and everything of that nature. He said he prayed all the time. Then the visitation came to him. This is the Ruach. You know, what I'm saying so when the visitation came to him, it left him without excuse. Now he could have not went. This is the problem. See, people say, okay, look. Well, when you don't do it, then that's when the issue comes. That this is why when the question rises up, with certain ones going to the kingdom or not into the kingdom, this shows you they get a chance right here. This shows you they get a chance. So all, all, uh, all Cornelius had to do is just don't go to Joppa and look for Peter. Or don't send the men to Joppa. If he had did that at that particular point in time, that would have been his chance. He would have been a Gentile that went to hell. Because he denied what was going on. The vision came. And he decided not to move forward so he can get the rest of the process. And we're not going to go through a whole lot of that, but just want to get to talk about a lot of this. You know, you know when Peter began to realize, he said, I realized that the Most High has no respect of persons. He would let them know that he understand that when the Most High chooses somebody, you know, that's who it is that he's choosing. It don't matter what we think about the individual. It means that we have to represent the Most High. Sometimes as you represent somebody, even if you're on a job, you know, the boss may tell you to do something. You may feel like it's not right, even though it's not nothing wrong with it. That's like a sin and then it may be saying, look, I want this one to do this and this one to do that. And you may see it different, but you represent the boss. And the boss, you have to do it the way the boss, or he's going to put another representative that is going to do it. That's the thing. So that's what has to happen. So even though you see it differently, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact that the Most High still wants it to go this way. The moral to this is to look at the fact that if you seek the Most High, this is those that, are, that haven't yet, don't know holy. If you're watching the video, you don't know anything about the word holy. If you read that passage, it shows that if you do that, all you got to do is what you saw Cornelius doing, and then you either get a visitation or you're going to run to somebody and they're going to begin to share the truth with you or whatever it is that needs to happen to get you on track. But the Most High is not going to allow you. He's not trying to send you to hell. He's trying to stop you from going to hell. And so that's what we have to look at. So at this particular point in time, later on down the line, the Ruach begins to fall on those, you know what I'm saying, those that are, are there. But it's too much to read it all. We're sticking with the point. The point is, if you look at this here, Cornelius was not yet saved. And Cornelius had a vision. And his vision told him to go find Peter. Peter was having a vision at the same time. Peter had been fast. And in Peter's vision, he knew. That's why we have to look at Cornelius was just praying. And he was seeking Yah. Peter was fast. And so Peter had more information, more knowledge. Like a lot of us, a lot of us may need to fast more so we can understand what it is that the Most High wants us to do or so we can be able to receive whatever we need to receive from the Most High so we can hear from the Ruach HaKadosh. And as we hear from the Ruach HaKadosh, it'll begin to tell us what to do or we'll connect with that one that's been looking just for us. Because sometimes, you know how you meet somebody and you'll meet this individual and say it's on, some, on a spiritual level and it's like you feel like you've been knowing them all your life? It's not, it's just the moment is right. This was just designed. This was designed in the Ruach for y'all to run into each other. This is just how this works. And the only way you can do these things and to obtain this type of, of understanding is that you walk in the real high condition. 
If you're in the flesh, you're not going to see this. It's going to skip right past you. We had just lined up. It was lined up perfectly. He prayed, sought Yanni, and, and in due time, he told him what he needed to do. If he had denied it, that would have been his ticket getting into the kingdom, gone. Uh, not saying that when they came again, but hey, look, he denied it that time. He told him to go to Joppa. Peter had a chance to deny it also, but he fought with it, but he still stood strong and did what he needed to do. And he wound up, you know, receiving him and everything so that he could show him the way. And then we have to realize just, you know, to draw down to Yah, looking at that right there, we have to make sure that we're in the Ruah. We have to make sure we're doing the things of Yah. So Cornelius at this point in time drew down to Yah without even having the Ruah. He didn't even know nothing but what he saw going on. He copied what he saw supposed to happen. And by him doing that, it, it put him in a position where he can actually be set up where he can actually be, you know, in the actual fold. We didn't have to no longer be an outside. It's a lot in this story. We have a whole lot in this story. We have a lot of visitation of angels in this book here. So it's like we have to look at that angels are not supposed to be spooky or anything like that. They're messengers of Yah. But if you're not open to receive any type of visitation from them or any visitation from the rock in general, it won't happen. I mean, it's like you're, 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 it's like doubt. So doubt locks up and it, it shuts out the movement of the most high in the spiritual realm because the fact that you you made it to the point where, okay, this is a fairy tale, but it's not a fairy tale. It's, re, it's supposed to be our reality. We're supposed to actually be actually spiritual beings having this human experience. We're not supposed to be set up where we're looking at it as we're in the flesh. This flesh is just a house. It's just something to, to keep us housed until the time comes. We're grown it to be able to put on that, that, that new body. The, the body that, that the Most High is going to give us, the glorified body. This is just all carnal right here we have going on. So therefore, in order for you to defeat this flesh, you have to constantly beat it in subjection. You have to constantly mortify, if that's the right word, the deeds of the flesh. You have to constantly make sure that, you have to constantly make sure that the flesh is under subjection because if you don't, the, 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 the spirit can't, it won't rise. That's why I talked about the flesh is indeed, the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. So it's like you want to do the right thing. Like Paul was saying in my mind, I want to do the right thing, but it's like something warring against me and the members of my body. It's like it's going to always be a struggle, no matter how you look at it, but that doesn't stop things. It's supposed to be a struggle because the struggle, that is resistance. That's why I said yeah. resist the enemy and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to Yah and he will draw nigh to you. All I can say is where we're at now in the time and hour that we're in now, we really got to make sure that we draw down to y'all. We really don't have time to be sidetracked and everything. We have to make sure that we get to a point where we have an assurance, where we know for a fact where we're going when we shut our eyes. It's not promised to wake up tomorrow. You don't, you don't know if you're going to walk outside and run into some random shooter or something like that. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to get and See, we don't know none of this stuff. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. No man knows the hour or the time. You don't know what's going to go on the next moment. So it's like we have to always make sure that we're ready. We have to be ready in season, out of season. There's no break. There's no time off of nothing. That's what he, that's what he hit me with last week when I was thinking. I said, look, there's no break. There's no time off. You don't really get a chance to relax or chill or none of that stuff. It's, now it's time to stop doing whatever the most high wants you to stop doing and do whatever he said do. That way you can get yourself on track. And with that, I just want to say, you know, uh, you know, this is pretty much all I had to say unless you want to say any more about it. Father, y'all, thank you right now in the name of Son Yahushua Mashiach for the word that went forth. We thank you right now. We realize that we need to draw now to you, Father. Y'all, we thank that we also know that we have to resist this enemy, Father. Y'all, he's constantly fighting on a regular basis, Father. Y'all, we know, Father, y'all, we are overcoming, Father. Y'all, we just thank you right now for just being with us right now. We thank you right now for this day that you have made, Father. Y'all, that we have set aside, Father, y'all, to be able to honor you even more. And we just thank you for everything that you're going to do, everything that you're doing, everything that you have done. In the name of Son Yahushua Mashiach, we pray. So be it. Thank you.